be. Yeah, he was saying, uh, we've been chatting with the players, obviously during this extended break quite a bit, and he was saying that he's hoping to, he feels that he's a little tiny bit narrow in range, that he plays, he's really, really good at mid-range, we know that, and he's comfortable with that, but he wants to start really getting into the intricacies of the other decks, especially control, he, he feels he's slightly weak at control decks and wants to address that. A sign of a professional, like just widening his repertoire all of the time. Wow, it looks like a Jade Druid band, what do you think about that? So the Jade Druid band's interesting to me. Apparently, Orange has been taking a lot of advice from Powder in recent times. He's saying that Powder's one of the best players in Europe at the moment. Uh, sort of snuck under the radar a little bit. He used to be, obviously, a well-known player. And sort of went missing a little tiny bit in recent times. But apparently last night, Powder was saying to Orange, you, you need to play it. Druid. And Orange started building with Moonfires and Malagos. And apparently he got really told off really quickly. He had 10 minutes <laughs> to submit the Druid. And Powder just said, no, you've got to submit Jade. Submit a Jade. And it doesn't matter. He got banned anyway, so Powder was right. All right, well, we're going to go into first game here in the Rogue versus the Mage. I mean, I guess the Druid, by all means, was a good bring if your opponent feels like he can't even play That's against it. That's what I mean, it. right? It's done its job. It's allowing you to play the decks that you wanted to play that may have otherwise got banned. Sure. So uh, by the very nature of it getting banned means it's a good call. All right, well, Reno Mage uh, versus Rogue, the matchup that still is under hot contention on who is actually favored. Uh, you know, I'm still kind of in the camp of Reno Mage being favored, but when I see Rogue being played, I can definitely see the pockets where it has those chances. I think Reno Mage has generally been getting the better of Rogue this tournament, but I feel like it's had to need a little bit of fortune, you know, sometimes getting right. the right removal at the right time and maybe being the top deck scenario that's being bailed out. And I haven't been talking to Orange that much, but I've got another Orange story here. He he told me after the first game that we cast on the very first day that Reno Mage is definitely favourite against the Rogue, and he knows exactly how to play, or very well how to play it, having had lessons from Mage, the builder of this version of the Mage. But he's playing it the other way around here, so let's see if he can use that knowledge to maybe get himself an advantage. So Orange says that he thinks Rogue He thinks is the Mage is favourite. Oh, Mage is favourite. Um, but obviously he's been getting help from Rage, who is one of the best Reno Mage players out there. And so maybe he can use his knowledge of how it works to his advantage. Obviously, Wang, no slouch himself. Um, we tend to underestimate the players from, mm -hmm. from the Eastern scene, but this guy's impressed everybody this weekend, I think, so far. Yeah, already introduced with a little bit of an awkward scenario. Just this is how does he want to remove stuff? If you can use Volcanic Potion, you can also use Forgotten Torch. And it looks like he chooses to use the Volcanic Potion in this sense. And it's not exactly a high-value Volcanic Potion. Do we feel like it's worth keeping things like the torch, or do you think the volcanic potion is not even that high value in general? I feel that the potion's not that high value. There's, there's not that many targets for it, so if you get anything out of it at all, I think sometimes with this mage deck you end up with cards that are just clutter in your hand that are waiting for a chance to be used. If you get something out of it at all, I think you just do it while you can. Uh, most of the minions are going to be big enough health to just be completely out of range, unless it's combined with a, a flame strike, and that's a long, long way away. Well, a uh, pretty passive turn from the Rogue, and it's going to continue to be passive unless Orange finds an opportunity to get sneak in that questing there, and that allows the Reno Mage to kind of get some breathing room here. Yeah, Orange. Uh, Shifting Shade seems is obviously the highest value individually, and he's missing a four mana minion. But I was thinking about Twilight Fame Call, just trying to think about his merits. Not really that much. It's not necessarily a deck that's reliant on all those small one health minions. Great pickup here for Orange. His turn is going to be awkward. He's going to have to decide whether he wants to play the questing, maybe a cold blood, maybe go something close to all in, which you don't want to do here. You get a second wind after you've done the first lot of damage. They reno. And then you try and conceal a questing and do it all again. And he has a hand where he can do a lot of burst damage. And he's thinking of just getting this probably a tempo West. questing down here. I think this means we're going to see a cold blood and a face tank for five because even though it can be pinged, that's a four mana ping a lot of the time. Yeah, you know, Orange is recognizing that maybe Huang had a moment of weakness. He had the coin volcanic potion. He doesn't have a lot going on for him. And you kinda, he, he's, he's most likely going to have to choose between removing this questing adventure or dealing with the swash burglar. And, you know, Huang can't do both. Right, which means he's going to take another chunk of damage and. Again, with Orange feeling that the mage is favoured, he probably feels the urge to try and get this over with without Reno even factoring in. It's like, oh, if you've got the Reno, I'd probably lose, but you're favoured anyway, so let's just try and beat the hell out of you while I can. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, he went for such an aggressive line, and he got a second questing adventurer. 
Uh, maybe he just plays the Tomb Pillager in Cold Blood. Cold Blood, you for ten? Seems good. Yeah, hitting for ten is really strong. I, I was just thinking about the second questing adventure, but I think it's gonna have to be stranded for now, and you really have to bank off the Tomb Pillager and the Cold Blood. Tomb Pillager is as if the questing adventure grew Thank twice you. over, anyways. Yeah, this, this is the same deal as last turn in a lot of ways. Um, one could definitely deal with at least one minion, but the chances are he can't deal with two, at least from where Orange is sat. And oh. that's another six damage, but this is a great pickup. Yeah, that allows him to deal with the the board now over the course of two turns. But prior to this, he was just, again, having to, like, polymorph one or torch one and really hope for the other not to hit. But Frost Nova allows him to ping down something now. And then he can polymorph the questing adventure. But, his job, it, but I mean, the, the damage has been done. Orange actually got almost everything he wanted out of the questing adventure short of winning the game. Yep. And Kwong now has to be in a position of drawing a heal or ice block and stall until the point where he can recover from this really low health deficit. Interesting that he chose to give Orange the coin here. He could have kept the the Pillager frozen at 5-1 and just maybe taken a point from a sheep or something in the future, but he just decided to give away the coin here. I'm not sure I'm keen on that play, but see how it works out for him. I'm sure that he's really mindful of every single hit point that he has. Yeah. So if even if you polymorph, you still have to kill the sheep because it's a 1-1 one -one that nicks you. Yeah, I wonder if Orange will be tempted here. Well, he will definitely be tempted. I wonder how tempted he is just to make a 4-4 four, four here and hit another point in the face and set up next turn potential lethal. How big does he feel he has to make this? He can probably just leave it because he knows that polymorph means that the other questing won't die. Let's see what he does. I mean, when I mean, he keeps the preparation, he still makes things like Gadgetan not nearly as dead as it could be. Just continue to widen his gap. I think yep. the, the magic number here for Orange is 5 because that means that he should be able to kill almost everything. He's one damage off of that, though, so if he picks up... But he has uh, Prep eviscerate. Flame Strike. Yeah, he does play Prep Flame Strike. That is something that can happen if uh, Kwong goes wide on the board. Yeah, but if he doesn't kill the 3-3 three, three, as well as the 12-8, the Prep Flame Strike just buffs the second questing to, to 5 anyway. Well, more importantly, Kwong can't actually deal with um, with everything here. He has yeah, this, to this is what I'm saying. He's, he's got the two cards in hand to buff the questing to lethal range. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, right, right, I wasn't, I wasn't right, very sorry. clear there. I thought you were saying that he could use that for tempo. No, like, just, yeah. just it's two cards that buff. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't make myself clear, <laughs> but that's, that's what he's going to do. Uh, he gets right. the eviscerate that you were talking about as well, so everybody wins, and right, Orange right. takes a 1 0 lead. But I think Prep Flame Strike's funnier. So, definitely. Yeah. A so good does Orange. That's the, that's the choice he used. Yeah. Okay, so Orange uh, being able to take a very strong game number one victory over Reno Mage, uh, what could end up heavily influencing the series' outcome? And he did it with one card left in hand versus six. And every play he made was taking advantage of mana, not cards. So you want to ping this 5-1? Ping this 5-1, see if I care. You want to do this? Every turn was you just can't deal with this minion and this. Obviously, he had a little tiny bit of luck in that he got the, he got the double questing so he was, and the pillager. He was able to put the two threats down at a time. But he played to that. He, he made sure that everything Huang did was inefficient in that game. Yeah, I mean, Orange had a line that wasn't exactly the most obvious place. Right. He went for the questing line instead of the Tomb Pillager, which felt more traditional. But he realized as time goes on, Reno Mage has more tools to dissect whatever plays that you try to do. So that was a, that was a very well-played game by Orange. Yeah, Something that uh, I don't think Kwong was prepared for. I think that is the difference between a person who plays Hearthstone well and then you get a person who's really prepared and knows... The, the extra intricacies. When you're playing best of seven, you've got five decks versus five. That's 25 matchups you need to know for every single best of seven. So yeah. these guys put in a lot of work to know all the intricacies of all of these matchups. That was some great Hearthstone. And now Orange goes into Warrior trying to see if he can keep up his momentum. Chuang is on the Dragon Priest. Now, Dragon Priest versus Dragon Warrior. Dragon Warrior tends to get out very aggressively onto the board and taking advantage of uh, the, the Priest's passivity. But if Priest can curve out as well, uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit close. It's contentious. It, it often comes down to how the stats really line up. Sometimes Twilight Whelp gets eaten by the Alex Ross's champion, the Fiery War Axe, but sometimes the Wormrest Agent and the 3-6 the Twilight Guardian puts a stop to a lot of the aggression that Warrior can put out. And this decision was going to be a hard one, but wow. it's been made a lot easier by the pickup of Alex Strauss's champion. <laughs> he had to decide whether he wanted to coin out the axe, yeah. but now he hasn't got to decide anything at all. This is absolutely beautiful now, Bob. Yeah, the optimal scenario has happened, and uh, Huang does have a recovery here. You know, prior to this, he uh, he really wasn't really sure about how well that Twilight Web will deal, because even if 
even if he didn't have the Alex Ross champion, Fire War Axe is still a little bit problematic to deal with. Yeah, I was just considering here whether he wants to play Nazoth's first May to keep the War Axe for later, or whether... You know, is he, how's this Ravaging Ghoul going to interact? And he's just going to play with Nazoth's first mate, I think. Either way, he's parting ways with his Alex Drazer's champion. Yeah. And you have to evaluate how impactful Patches Fine, is. And also, you know, like you say, the Ravaging Ghoul was a way of dealing with, with four health minions on the next turn. And that's now not such a good option. So, difficult decision, but he decides, I want the tempo on the board, I'm going to get you some Priest. He just plops minion after minion down, and that's exactly what he's chosen to go with. Yeah, what I like about it, too, is that you get... And I know, I know this sounds really silly, but you just don't really want to have that scenario where um, patches gets into your hand. So, it's, it's just another benefit. It's not the primary reason why. Right, but it's still, I mean, but if it he doesn't play it there, it's like a 20 or 30% chance over the next four or five turns. Right. Yeah, it's not just one card that you're going to miss. It's, it's going to be a long time before that gets played if it doesn't get played on that turn. One thing to consider, too, is uh, just, just in general of how powerful the tempo is and what Priest can really do to mess with what you're trying to do as the warrior. Uh -huh. Priest really has lacking AoE these days. They don't really have a lot of things to deal with a wide board. So if you're able to keep a lot of minions at low health, but you know go wider, look how slow Dragonfire Potion is. And it still takes a while well, to get to that And point. there's another problem with Dragonfire Potion against this hand is it doesn't hurt dragons. That's also So it's going to be it's almost a dead card here. Not quite, but near enough. And Orange having the Curator in hand is also something that will be big going down the stretch here. The operative is kind. It's not all in yet, but look at this, all this card draw, but it's, it's getting pretty rough here for one. You know, Orange uh, having that Ravaging Ghoul, by the way, something that we didn't really talk about much. It was a card that was being cycled in and out, which is very surprising considering that that card was considered almost auto-include in every Warrior right. deck. Uh, putting it back in, though, anticipating a lot of pirates being put into the field now that you have five decks. I think I like that choice by Orange. Yeah, I think if you're not quite so all in on the pirates, which you're not because you're playing the Dragon Warrior, then as long as you use your pirates carefully and you play good Hearthstone, then having a very, very strong card in your deck is going to help you. Obviously, it has a little bit of anti-synergy with patches, but we see there, actually, it's just one for the patches, one for your ghoul, one for your weapon, one for something else. That's four, that kills a minion, and it doesn't really slow you down. Well, Corcoran Elite helps you fight back on the board immediately. Your Father Berserker has the most potential. Uh, the nice thing about Nazoth's first mate is you can also squeeze it in the next turn with six mana. So yeah. I, I think all of them have viable choices. And if you evaluate the state of the board, it looks like Chuang says he needs that first mate and that weapon to help earn him back a little bit of tempo without having to just play clunky minions over the next two turns. Yeah, he'll be looking at that 3-1. It it's not entirely obvious how that will load up with the first mate, but probably will find a way for this one to be really valuable given that... Just, just given the numbers on the board. So there's a way to make this Frothing Berserker f a 5-4 minion. Uh, you know, and I think Orange actually wants to specifically make it a 4-attack minion because it plays it around uh -huh. Shadow or Death. So he's waiting to play the Frothing Berserker. So while it may look like he's trying to... Uh, he might have missed one extra damage or attack. It's, it's, it's very deliberate. Normally in this situation you play around cards like Holy Nova. Uh, but here, I don't know if there's a Holy Nova in the deck. I assume there is a Holy Nova in this deck, but it doesn't really matter because it would buff the Frothing Berserker so high if it was played that Orange has chosen to leave both minions alive, and this is a real problem here for Wong. I mean, it's like you said, Dragonfire Potion doesn't usually kill everything in this matchup, uh, so I think this might be what you, can, you might want to take with the Dragonfire Potion. If you play anything else, you're playing into the Frothing Berserker getting massive, I don't think you want to play from that position. Yeah, if you don't play this now, you're not playing in this game. So that's the decision you're putting yourself against, and nothing just seems any better at all. Well, the alternative is to play, you know, Nizaz first maid and, and maybe an Azure Drake, and then hoping that your opponent extends more into the board. Dragonfire Potion can get more value, but that's assuming that your opponent's not going to play a single dragon next turn and punish you for doing that. Yes. Yeah, no, oh, he's going to go for the Azure Drake and take the, the slightly greedier route. This does, of course, deal with the dragon on the board, and then, so that means that next turn the potion could clear, but I think this is a bit risky, personally, when you haven't even got the death in hand. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he's not really necessarily accounting for things like Core Chron Elites or other things that can also trade and get damage in. But maybe that's the fact that he wants that to happen. Because remember, uh, Orange doesn't exactly have an easy way to deal with something like the Azure Drake. Uh, he just has to kind of play a big taunt minion to get in the way of it first. And Huang is willing to accept a little bit of damage. So this is a little bit of a hard play to make. And if it works out for Huang because he sees something that we don't, yes. then I'm ready to tip my cap because I, I, it looked like you know a pretty good time to use Dragonfire Potion, but he sees something that we don't. Yeah, a player of this standard doesn't make a play that looks this weird unless he's worked out. Hang on. Orange may have to deal with this fourth one. It doesn't line up nicely, right? He's going to put six damage into it to kill it. And he gets some of that damage back because the fourth thing buffs up by three. I guess so. The only thing that I'm slightly concerned about is he took a lot of damage to play this greedy line. Uh -huh. And he hasn't really accomplished too much. Although, the nice thing is that if you played Dragonfire the previous potion, there'd be a 3-1 minion on the field. Yes. This time when he uses Dragonfire potion, there's nothing. Right, he's managed to clear it entirely, and he's even got the option to put down the North Shard and eat up the axe. But I think he will be concerned that he needs more cards, even though he has got the Azure Drake. So he may not play this North Shard Cleric. There's a lot of big stuff in Orange's deck. Yeah, he's right too, because the Curator will put Dragon Warrior back into the driver's seat in terms of card value and the amount of resources that you'll have to be able to fight the attrition battle. And Priest will need every single card he can get, so holding on to the North Shard Cleric. Uh, might be pretty important because what's what's really accomplishing by throwing out the Northshire Cleric, you draw the weapon out, which may be something you want to do because you might have the logic, oh, well, I need that weapon charge to be attacked anyways. But you also do have a way to stop it with the uh, Twilight Guard in the following turns. Yeah, and he's gone for it. So let's see how... Oh. I was saying, let's see how he chooses to deal with this, but he chooses to top deck Alex Draz as champion, mm -hmm. which seems like a very, very natural play on top of the Azure Drake here. Yeah, that actually might be better than Curator because you get better power on the board and you can save your Fiery War Axe charge. I guess the downside is you want to play the Curator as quickly as possible to make sure that you don't get like miss your Finley, to make sure you get the maximum value out of it before you draw stuff, but it does look really good, the Alex Draz as champion of the Azure Drake to me. I mean, you do draw a card to the Azure Drake, so you're not like li missing out too much on the hand right. resources. Picks up Execute. For the light finder. Not useful right now, but that actually might be useful if uh, Chuang builds up a really big Twilight Guardian, which looks like he might be aiming for a green. Or uh, a big Twilight Drake, one or the other. Yeah, this Execute's going to be invaluable, and Orange is looking at setting up a board that just can't be dealt with. Obviously, the 4 4 is always a problem anyway, but. When you can defend it with your minions, it's even more of a problem. I must consider. All right, well, Huang has two choices here. Either to play a little bit better for the card value by playing things like Azure Drake, which cycles itself, and try to buff that, or play Twilight Guardian and hope that this 3-9 or 3-10 uh, will be able to stop the aggression from his opponent. Mm. But the problem with that is that it dies on board just to the weapon plus the minion trades. Yeah, he's going to build something up. Obviously, he doesn't know about the execute. He'll know it's in the deck. The no lists are open. I've stressed that every single round. But sometimes you just have to take the chance. They haven't got it. Okay, so building a pretty good-looking board. And this is going to be the Twilight Guard. It does go unchecked when it comes down. Of course, this 4-7 is going to have to be dealt with. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Drew the Finley. No, not going to be a big deal, though. You still draw a dragon. Yeah, uh, and, and he's already drawn the card from the Azure Drake as well. Yeah, and a Fierce Monkey if you have it. So, I mean, Orange, I feel like he can squeeze in that Finley in any way he wants to. So he can play it first to see if he wants to evaluate that uh -huh. hero power at all. Because he can use the mage hero power, for example, to activate Execute instead. Uh, that is an option. Yeah. <laughs> And he's going to go with that just to keep his options open. Let's see what he gets. Lesser Heal, Dagger Mastery, Totemic Call. All those pretty subpar. Lesser Heal feels like the better option out yeah. of all of them. Because you're able to heal not only yourself, but only your, you're also your minions. You know, your, your Azure Drake is also really annoying for your opponent to deal with. That is what he chooses to go with. The Let's see how he progress the rest. So he's just going to throw things out there. I wonder how much of this is going to go just for the face here. Wow, Orange just looks like he doesn't trust his opponent at all with that Azure Drake, so uh -huh. he chooses to remove it. I was feeling like 
face pressure might be a good option too, considering that his opponent's only on, you know, 13 health right now. He would have been at 9. Uh, but Chuang, with that Azure Drake, felt too scary to deal with, so... Uh, yeah, Orange is going through the, I've won this if I don't mess up. So now he's going onto the defensive of the, let's just not mess up. And my, my minions have enough tempo to take me over the finishing line. So what dragon can Huang pick up that can really help him? Think about Chilma at the moment. Chilma would be nice. Uh, <laughs> Nefarian, something like that with a desperation throw, maybe. Yeah, the problem is that you can't play it if you play Nether Spider's Thorn. You need something 7 or cheaper. So yeah, Chillmore is the natural choice if you're going to do it right now. Maybe an operative, that could be too slow. There's also the Twilight Guardian, which you can buff its health. Deathwing, Deathwing. is actually a, a pretty decent choice. It is. Uh, so you buff your Twilight Guardian. You kind of play out your hand here. Hope your opponent doesn't really kill you next turn. Yeah, hope he draws out the Execute. Deathwing. That would be a trap that Orange could walk into here. Oh, he's so afraid of dying that he's willing to heal just in case. Let's see how this works out. Oh, wow. Bookworm just comes into the hand to shut down the 3-6. Oh, my goodness. This is so huge. This is going to be that he doesn't have to even think about the execute. and Yeah. Well, here's the really funny thing, Lorinda, is that uh, even though Huang has Deathwing and Orange has Execute, Orange doesn't have an easy activator for that Execute. Execute needs a minion to be damaged first, and Deathwing uh, will have full health until Orange draws something that can help him do that. Right, I was going to say he's got a couple of Taunt minions, but he now only has one Taunt minion on the board next turn. Uh, <laughs> Deathwing's going to be gigantic here. And you don't really play around this if you see the Nether Spy Historian. You don't think Deathwing... I guess you don't, but your opponent didn't play the dragon that he drew. How many are left over? Oh, there weren't a, a huge point. number of dragons that could be in his hand there. That's a pretty good point. Um, well, he he had... I mean, it could be mana, Ysera, yeah. but I, I think you bring up a really good point here. And now the Deathwing has revealed himself, and he's also put himself you know, kind of close to lethal range. Orange does have taunts, though. And those taunts could be massive. Not to mention that Dragonoid Crusher on the other end. And that is massive. That's a 9-9. Nine, nine. That threat is lethal. So Guardian into Crusher and hope things don't go pear-shaped. But, but then the problem is if Huang picks up a Shadow Word Pain... Yeah, that would be GG. That would be exactly lethal because he didn't heal. So wow. if he plays the Frothing Berserker, he gets to heal. And then if he executes, he can bank on the Dragonoid Crusher over... Two turns to kill. Yeah, an orange at least. Yeah, making up for possibly a slight oversight there by playing this one correctly and a pretty good spot. Well, a spot that's probably scared the life out of him to be in. So Huang at this point probably has to play the Twilight Well just to represent more damage onto the board because then he has a he has 15 onto the board and uh -huh. doesn't. I think he needs to do that. Otherwise, oh, I guess Orange can heal himself too. So it's not as relevant. Ah, oh, it's tough. It's tough because Twilight Whelp also gives up his Dragon Activator. Uh, In case he picked up Blackwing Corruptor or yeah. some other card that needed it. Yeah, it's always difficult. He's going to have to just go through all the cards that are left in his deck at this point and seeing how many of you need the Whelp and how many don't need the Whelp. And he's decided that he needs the Whelp. All right, well, looks like Execute and Draconoid Crusher. So this is... This is the push that Orange is going to use to close the game, and I think Huang is pretty much out of luck here. The Twilight Whelp was exactly one of the worst draws in his deck. I think he couldn't have asked for a worse one. Yeah, this... I can't imagine there's a way he can get out of this, but there's probably something that's very, very obscure, but I can't see what it would be. Maybe he's going for the second Historian. Well, Shadow where Death stalls, so he's still alive. And, yeah, he, he could hypothetically still be bailed out of this. Wow, let's see what Orange picks up from this and from the Azure Drake. That didn't touch the side, so that's something good. Man, another Blackwing or another uh, Draconoid Crusher here, and it's just really tough for Hong to stabilize. No, Bookworm is uh, too late. So while he did need that Twilight Wolf for activation, he's not going to be able to do anything else. Takes his beating like a man. And that's going to be end of game two. Orange up 2-0. Two games away from securing a top four finish. 
Yeah, and he just took the initiative early in that game and never let go. Very slight misstep, I felt, with the monkey there. But other than that, I think that was another well-executed mid-range game from Orange, who is just proving how good he is at this style of play right now. All right, so two games remaining separate Orange from uh, a date in the semifinals. Now, he has Shaman and Mage. That's uh, that's two decks where I think Huang might just queue up Priest again and says, yeah, I'm going to try my best to get <laughs> another win. Um, and I feel like the Priest didn't actually draw even that badly. He had a turn one, two, and three with two Wormrest Agents and Twilight Whelp. But that early Arlex Shaw's champion draw helped give Warrior a lot of early game momentum. Yeah, the, the, the Dragon Warrior... Went away for a while, partly because of how good Pirates is and partly because people had started to beat it. It had been around a long time, but it's just never really, really completely vanished. The deck is still a very good one. It serves a very good purpose. And when well, you're playing against a priest deck that hasn't really got any surprises for you, I think that the Dragon Warrior just has a little bit of extra trickery. It's got an execute, it's got weapons, and it's got similar sized minions to the priest. All right, so here we go. Game number three. Looks like we're going to a Mage Mirror. Okay. Reno Mage Mirror. So if Huang feels confident in the Reno Mage Mirror, uh, he has to have either a much greedier list or a, a much faster cycle list so that he can hit his win condition a lot earlier. I personally don't think Reno Mage Mirrors tend to go to fatigue, but they can if you play to that, as you can tell by uh, Huang choosing to keep the Acolyte of Pain. That probably contributes to his game plan. He's going to cycle a lot faster, hit his car, um, hit his combos much quicker. But, uh, you know, Orange already has one of the crucial cards in this matchup, and that's an early Alex Straza. Early Alex Straza, they both got Antoniadus, so see if Orange can get that Alex Straza to do its thing. In fairness, even though it's early, it's, it's not likely to be the killer blow on its own because there's just so much defense on both sides. And this game often goes long because both players just struggle to, to land any sort of significant blow. I actually really like this play, uh, Thanos on turn two, because you're just trying to cycle into the more impactful stuff. You're not going to really save uh, Thanos for Mega Burst like you would in traditional Freeze Mage stuff. This play from Swong is play. That's open kind of ambitious. Hit. I guess you right. don't want to use your Frostbolt on an Acolyte of Pain. But you would have to if it came up. I, th I guess that's a thing here. But uh, this is kind of assuming that he didn't have follow-up plays, but he does. He can save Acolyte for turn five and draw. He can play Cabal Courier next turn. So he, he just trades his Acolyte in for one card, which makes it a glorified loot hoarder, a three-man loot hoarder, essentially. I guess you did absorb some removal, so other bigger threats are safer. But still, I feel like it was a little bit wasteful. Yeah, and... Even though it feels like it's just a tiny bit wasteful as the game goes on, all these little oh. things will add up. That is a ridiculous series of choices. Okay, so Entomb is really strong against a lot of the threads. Twisting Nether is also pretty good. Got to be so careful with this Entomb. Got to be so careful. You're going to put a card in your deck that's already in your deck. If you don't pay absolute oh, attention, yeah. <laughs> you might mess up a Kazakus right, or a Vino right, you're Jackson. Right. You're so right, and I, I kind of forgot about that. Um, Orange picks up the Doomsayer here, and that's, a, that's an opportunity for him to set up an Azure for the following turn. But he also has the Frost Nova, so maybe he feels like he can save that. I personally think that um, either is okay, because if you play the Doomsayer now, you set it for an Azure Drake, and that's, that's actually a pretty good opportunity to start taking away your tempo. But you also have a reactive Azure Drake turn, where you can play Azure Drake plus Arcane Blast, for example. And that's a way that you can also get value off of that card, uh -huh. and then save Doomsayer for that combo, like Do Do uh, Doomsayer Frost Nova. Yeah, plenty of choices to make regarding that, and it's one of those where you feel that this isn't going to be a perfect use, but you're going to get a good use. And if you get, you've all you've got to do is your Doomsayer has to be better than their Doomsayer. So if you get a good use out of it, that's probably another tiny incremental edge you're getting in this game. I mean, as time goes on, Doomsayer gets less likely to be able to go right. off anyways. There's a lot of ways that Rio Mage can deal with it. This, right, At this very instance, it's just kind of inefficient for Huang to deal yeah. with it, even though he could. So Orange making the natural play for Tempo here and throwing it back to Huang to just keep him every turn. It's Huang who's having to deal with something. 
Yeah, Juan doesn't have much. He's got a lot of burn. Uh, I feel like tossing a fireball into this isn't bad, or even a frostbolt if you feel like fireball has better uh -huh. scaling for killing stuff. Like fireball the Antonias, for example. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be much else. Frostbolt Pig is probably the favorite. Uh, it's not clear cut because obviously Frostbolt costs a lot less mana and when you get to turn 10, if you do three things instead of two things, that might be crucial later in the game. Yeah, I'm thinking about alternative plays as well. Doesn't really seem nearly as much uh, as good. So, uh -huh. looks like it is the Frostbolt of choice. And Orange just con continues to gain initiative here. Uh, he has an opportunity to draw cards. and What he, I think he really needs to find in this next few turns is follow-up burn to Alexstrasza. Um, or he has an opportunity. He, he, he can just like find other ways to make Antonius draw a lot of fireballs. Uh, and this is where cards like Burger Bully end up becoming like really insane in, in this matchup specifically. The Burgly Bully with a Y. <laughs> Two Ys. One you're right, you're right. Uh, actually, yes. Lorinda pulled me aside. He's like, listen, Frodi, I know that you know, I don't want, I'm kind of new and I don't want to pull rank here, but uh, it's actually Burgly Bully. And I'm like, oh, Yeah. God and they said, it. well, just tell me. So I told him again on stream live. Um, so Orange was talking about he didn't play the Soulcaster yesterday. And what's happened is the players all in the top 12 have independently gone through yesterday's games and copied Zixo's list. <laughs> I mean, Soulcast was pretty good. You can, you can. See, I think Orange doesn't want to actually just play uh, the Kazakas because then he can Kazakas and Soulcast right. next turn. So he's doing a freeze mage tactic, which is dumping a card that he doesn't necessarily need, um, which is hard to say because I feel like the coin is also not as useful, but. It does translate into a turn 8 Alexstrasza or an extra Fireball for Antonitis. Yeah, and we're going to find out exactly what he does here. And he is going to go with that line. Yeah, he was saying that basically all of the mage players, are literally in the building, yes, they just came to the conclusion that this was the best list, give or take a card. And everybody to a man has converged on the same list overnight. Uh, which is interesting. Well, you've got 12 good pros or strong players at the very, very least in the same room and... They've all had their own experience with slightly different builds, and they've all resubmitted today an almost identical build of the deck. Yeah, that actually makes me feel a little bit bad for Sixo because it, that means that Sixo found the best list and almost feels like other people benefit off of his discovery as opposed to Well, he Sixo's won his group, which puts him straight into the top eight, and Zigzo's being Zixo has probably got a better list and just revealed this one yesterday. He's he, he probably Maybe. got something else for today. Maybe, but I'm just saying that y yeah. you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it, It's kind of what happened at BlizzCon, where Amnesiac figured out the Cobalt Geomancer list, and then a lot of people copied him, and well, it turns out that Amnesiac... But you have the choice to save that for the later stages if you want to take the risk. Yeah, it's never. I really know it's not easy. Risk. I know it's not easy. Not really the good risk to take. But we'll see. I mean, the metas do end up uh, adapting, and perhaps uh, Sixo found out something beneficial from that. Okay, well, I'm getting a very natural, obvious-looking turn here to just tidy this up and generate his own board state for the first time in like three games. Orange has plenty of ways to respond to this. Uh, you know, that one mana Kazakis potion, by the way, was really interesting. That fact that he took a one mana one. Uh, when you play Reno Mage, you sometimes have, like, Ink Master Solia in your deck, so you have ability to even take up to 10 without really being having to play it for 10. Uh -huh. You can play it essentially for free. Mm. Uh, Orange, uh, by the way, really thinking about his choices here, because he does have the ability to follow up his Alexstrasza with Burn, but if his opponent plays Reno, is he going to be too screwed from that? Uh, he can take it a little bit slow, too, and take the opportunity to develop an Ice Block first prior to Alex Straza, so that way he feels a little bit more prepared for any kind of situation. Yeah, get the other Torch into your deck is usually something you want to do efficiently. This would be a good time to do that as well uh, by taking out, say, the Azadrake. You'd eat three, take a little bit of time by taking three from the, the Elemental, but it wouldn't be too bad a turn, I don't think. Okay, looks like Orange mm. is going to play the removal game. Is he going to play the ice block behind this? I think Feels he a will. very reasonable yeah. tactic. You're always looking for that spot to put that ice block down that is uh, like not going to interfere too badly with your turn. That looks like a good spot. Cabalist home here from Huang is going to give you a little bit of extra value to Owen in this match. I wouldn't hate to see the dirty rat here. 
and looks like he is thinking about it because your opponent kind of took a long time to do a very passive play, so it feels like he's setting up combo pieces. And if you can pull out Alex Straza, or you can pull out Antonitis or something, like yeah, even Reno. Oh, that's huge! That's massive, and he pulled out the Alex Straza, which means that Huang is going to be able to avoid that kind of burst coming out of Orange's hand. And with Reno, it means that he can also play the slow game. Yeah, and he's going to polymorph it, not in two bit very wisely, as we pointed out earlier. And yeah, got the things nicely set up now for a little bit more beating. Just nibbling away at that health total. So now this game has completely shifted from Orange potentially setting up a burst finish to most likely a value game. So I think Orange is going to actually have to shift his focus into just surviving, because I think uh -huh. Huang is ahead of him in the draw. I but agree. It's hard to say, because Orange had the Arcane Intellect, so I don't know exactly how many cards deep e each other are. But if they're even, then Orange has every reason to play slow, because he can even try to justify saving this Kazakus. The one that appears after the Dirty Rat, just, right. just to add. Yeah. And, yeah, he feels like he should be able to... Yeah, just convert three fireballs right now. I, yeah. I think that's fine. Uh, you can use either the Kazakus potion. I, I I don't even know the details on it, but assuming it's like freeze or some of the two two or something. Be fine. There was a freeze for sure. I'm not sure. Oh, what the other part a random was. minion that died. Oh, but the Alshasa was turned into a, a sheep. <laughs> Summon a sheep. Yep. Every time. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a feeling. And man. the sound like, effects as well, just to make sure you're utterly and utterly BM'd by the sheep. Well, uh, I mean, Huang has a lot of ways he can choose to deal with this. I wonder if this is worth using the Entomb on. I'm actually thinking that it probably isn't. Y you know what's an actually better target is, is Kazakus. Um, right. That would be some forward thinking, but he knows that extra Kazakus is in there, yeah? And, and this and game's if going he draws long. A, if he draws a Kazakus, he'll never have two in a deck. Right. Yeah, I like it. I mean, actually, if you entomb the, the Antonidas, I guess you won't have two either. You won't, but I don't know if you'll always have the value out of the second one. If you use the first one for value, the second one might just yeah. end up being a 7 mana 5 7, which is a very sad, sad, sad stat line. Yeah. One thing that I, I, I believe Orange isn't even accounting for is something like Entomb, which puts Huang pretty far ahead of the fatigue plan if they're going for that now. Yeah. So, entombing this actually isn't nearly as bad as we thought before, because Huang ends up having that Antonius in his hand. If he if he didn't have Antonius in his hand, I would say that. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, using Entomb is very ill-advised. So Orange has a lot of burn in hand, but there's no point to even start using that on the face at the moment, because Arena would just undo all that good work. So he'll want to use his fireballs for minions and try and get some repeated damage through from his, his piddly little creatures at this I mean, point. He could even get another Kazakus, but... By his hesitation, doesn't look like he has it. <laughs> yeah. A full house of Kazakas and Fireballs. <laughs> Sounds pretty um, intimidating. It's pretty unbeatable. Only beaten by four of a kind. Ooh, interesting. He's gotten a shadow form, which uh, gives him a huge edge. Almost as if he used Justicar True Heart. Just double your hero power. Yeah, exactly that, except it's half the mana of Justicar. You don't get a 6 3, though, but I think you'll take that deal. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a really powerful effect. So Chuang, he doesn't exactly have the the best cards right now uh, outside his Antonitis. Oh, there you go. That's the Kazakus. Does he want to play it though? He can also even take this really slow. He doesn't want to take it too slow because of the opposing Dirty Rat. But I mean, I I kind of want to brand Kazakus in case he does Dirty Rat. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. You, you want to play it quickly enough. Yeah, yeah. So it depends how you ver word slow. I, I'm actually. Well, okay. So he plays Mirror Image instead of saving it for Yeah, that feels like it's an Antonidas bait, but... Um, it's, yeah, it's it's interesting because... He what do you need a, why do you need a Mirror Image? Your opponent's not going to play Leroy on you or anything. Yeah, he didn't need to empty his hand or anything. He's got eight cards. Mm. That, that would have been nine. He would have been fine. Feels like that was a little bit hasty on his part. Yeah, and then, and then it also makes Effigy worse in case you wanted to play Effigy. So now Effigy is like off limits. Time runs out on me. Yeah. Okay. So this turn was a little bit awkward from Huang. I think. Uh, I think he may have played a little bit too quickly here because I think Possibly he miscounted Kizakis. how many cards he had in hand. I mean, the one thing that he could have been accounting for was that he had too many cards. Yeah. But if he he could have also just played like Frost Nova and just left it at that. Let's see where that leads. But I, th I suspect he felt he had an extra card in hand to what he had. 
Uh, final mean, portal. He had enough space in his hand to play that for sure. Because he's just not scared about taking a couple of t hits for two at any point. Or anything, so. Well, I mean, Brand Brandon Kazakis always at least replaces itself. So if yeah. he had ten cards, you still had three mana to dump something. <laughs> I'm just looking at these two hands and wondering what on earth is going on. What are we watching, Frodo? <laughs> well, Antonidas actually makes this uh, effigy pretty ridiculous, but uh, Orange can use the... The... What's it called? The sheep. The polymorph. The polymorph. Uh -huh. So he has to account for all kinds of spells because he knows that came off of Cabal's Tome if he paid attention to where it is in the hand. And both players playing around Reno by not really going face much and right. neither of them actually having a Reno in their hand. So you fireball target the Antonidas first. Yeah. But then you might have the effigy come out here. So maybe the sh you sheep first in case it's like Spellbender or Counterspell. So he sees that it isn't, and when he sees that effigy pop, he's going to be really relieved. Because only a one mana comes in, he comes out now. Yeah, that works out nice, and he hasn't got to worry about what that secret is anymore either. Uh. Man. Looks like he's not going to wait for Brand to come into his hand for Kazakus, and then Brand's going to be a dead card. But I think he's got to take a 10 mana potion here. Yeah, he's, he's going to at least get the value. Although he has a lot of damage in hand, but he's going to have to get through, in his mind at least, um, Amino, etc. If Orange took summon three random minions and he had his gold thorn, oh. that would be absolutely massive board. He couldn't even deal with it at this all. This is where you get a 0 13 Doomsayer. The opponent could never. <laughs> That's true. But then. But you've got to go for it. It's, actually, it's you're right. Fantastic. There's Doomsayer, there's two sheeps. There's a lot of ways that Orange can whiff and. Yeah, something kind of bad. But yeah, I think you have to take the chance there. Everything but the Doom Save is so good. You just don't do it right away. You wait for a few more things to die. Can you get a card check on how many cards remain in the decks for each player? I can tell you it's between 7 and 12. Wow, you can tell that visually. Yeah. yeah this is the, the Dang, you're like uh, Clark Kent discovering his X-ray vision. <laughs> but using his powers for good instead of naughty. When that, sh when that shrinks, it will be six cards. <laughs> twelve and th thirteen. Oh, you said, got it wrong. You said seven to twelve. Are they you different sizes? Me, Are they different sizes? You broke the pack. And I'm, now I'm you're going to build, now. You're gonna have to build up your credit again. Yeah, I'm upset. I could tell you that his pack size will shrink next turn, but <laughs> I, I obviously just can't see straight. That's what happens when you get old, for and I don't get old. It's bad for you. <sighs> Don't remind me. So, someone asked me my age today, and I forgot, and I, I had to remind myself. I actually did the wrong age by accident because I forgot. I was, was it by like, accident? Have you reached that age I yet? I thought I was a year older accident? than I was, and I panicked. And I was like, <laughs> oh my god, did I just lose a year of my life? <laughs> Not like this. But it turns out that, you know. It whizzes happy. by. It goes so quick when you're playing Hearthstone. Well, uh, you know, Orange picks up the brand a little bit uh, unfortunate there. You know. I, I bet Orange is actually thinking about playing Brand because that it increases his chance that a good minion gets revived if he has it. What to do? What to do? Right. And he hasn't got anything else to stick back in or to use with Bran anyway. He's used a lot of the stuff that's Branable. Time runs out on oh, he actually summoned just an 8 8 demon. So it's just an 8 14. Okay, now that pack size does shrink to the 12. I'm wrong, aren't I? I'm just wrong. Anyway. <laughs> so, Orange is behind by one in Fatigue, and Huang still has yet to play something like his Kazakus, which can also lead to some pretty good shenanigans. Um, I definitely think Huang, uh, Chuang, uh, Chuang, Huang is in the driver's seat in this position. Uh, man, you know, as much as you don't want to take excessive damage here, how long are you going to hold on to this brand Kazakus? Yeah, and how do you actually deal with an 840 when you've used your Polymorph? It's a bit of a problem. He's got to eat up three or four cards. Well, you can first draw Kazakus Potion, which is good. But, yeah. I mean, what's the rush? You're at you, Even if your opponent pushes you down to 19, you're still relatively safe from burst. I guess what the scary thing is you don't actually have uh, Reno. And you don't have any minions apart from the Archmage in hand for Dirty Rat as well. So, at some point, you start feeling the pressure and feel, you know what? I'd better go for it. Transform minions into sheep was one of those options. I imagine that's what he took. Wow, he's taking two tens. I like this a lot. Wow, man has that guts. Greedy. I like it. I like it. His hand costs so much mana. 
That's good. He's got 20, yeah. 30, 41, 45 worth of mana over seven cards. The average cost of his cards cost uh, six point about eight. Three eight. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, you're right. You're right. Man, how did you calculate that so fast? I made you're like the rain man. It's correct. Yeah, I'm like the rain man who gets it wrong every time. That's the problem. It's like still yeah. the rain man though. All right, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I thought he I was counting wrong. That's mental <laughs> math. I don't even know how I got this job. Horribly <laughs> unqualified. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the guy who pays you. Oh, we paid you this much money, Dan. Oh, uh, why can't I buy anything? <laughs> I mean, as, if there's any indication of how America is red, I guess it doesn't really mean anything <laughs> that an unqualified person gets the position. <laughs> All right, well, Kazaka's potion... Coming in here, transforming everything into sheep, and he's going to summon three of the minions that died. Brand. And another sheep. Well, Brand just looks like a farmer in that middle yeah. of that image. He's just surrounded by sheep. He's got his gun. Just wrangling his cattle. Yeah, he's just going to have to shoot his dinner. If you're orange, I, f do you, I feel like you're in a position where you kind of have to go for this uh, two-turn or three-turn lethal by popping ice block. You're, you're definitely not going to win the attrition battle. Your opponent just commanded the board. At, I mean, your opponent already played Cabal Courier and Kazakis. There's not many more battle cries that he can benefit off of. It's starting to feel like a, a desperate moment here. But, you know, he does have the hero power. And that hero power is extremely powerful over time. You can grind out your opponent because you work twice as fast. Yeah. He's going to have a lot of damage in hand reduced. So, and it's 6.42, by the way, last turn. I just realized 3 7 isn't point three eight. I'm, I'm really sorry. All right. Calm I'm down there, John Let you Nash. all down. <laughs> Chill. All right. Uh, making sure to take out the minion that can snipe Emperor Thorson. And now he has three fireballs. So, I guess he's got that 18 damage from hand in one turn. So, he does actually do almost the same exact thing, which is pretty clever, honestly. Yeah. Uh, because if he pyroblasts the face, it's a little bit too obvious. But, you know, what's kind of amazing is Juan doesn't have Reno this entire time. And by yeah, acting... Oh! <laughs> this thing's actually annoying to deal with. The, the validator Doomsayer, or it's not validated. Some other word, Doomsayer. Yeah, you know what? It's it's go time here for Orange. I think I think you got to go for it. That's your, you're clearly behind. Ink Master Sully is not going to win you the game. Uh, yeah, okay. So I, I'm thinking triple fireball... And just set up for the pyroblast finish. If he has Reno, he has it. It's 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 so hard to say from his position. It's so easy for us to make that conclusion. But it's I I, I feel like his best chance to win right now. He just has to recognize that he has to calculate his percentages. What are the chances that his opponent plays Reno? And if he does have Reno, can I actually win the game? What what are my chances of winning the game if he does have Reno and I try to grind it out with my current hand? His current hand is pretty bad. Yeah, that it's involves looking at what else he's got left in the deck. They maybe one or two extra out. I can't think what they would be, though. Uh, there's going to be a whole load of freeze left in there as far as I can make it. Oh, he sees it. He sees it. He says, I have to go for this, and you don't have Reno. This is absolutely terrific, by the way. Like, they always have Reno, right, when you're sat opposite them? They always I have Reno. Know, they might get it now or not. He can get Alex Straza, but Alex Straza still gives Orange a chance if he draws Roaring Torch. Oh, he has to ping for it. He has to ping his own minion. Yeah, he knows the deal now. There's no reason that his orange his would His Kazakus potion didn't give him armor. <laughs> he needs to ping his Thanos right now. And get that Reno Jackson, whatever. Is it a 1 out of 9, 1 out of 8? No! Not like this. Can, is there anything else? Is there anything else? Can he fireball his loot hoarder and with his three remaining mana heal himself? <laughs> or or play something else ridiculous. I don't think so. And I think Orange may have found the only way for him to win the game by calculating the odds and just recognizing that that two-turn lethal was the only chance that he had. That is spectacular. And Juan knows what's up. He just can't do anything about it. He's, oh, he's he, pissed. He has gone for the dig. He's so mad. I be mad. I'm, I am mad on his behalf. <laughs> I'm excited. Like, That's I'm, such a spot, such a play. I'm pretty hyped for Orange, too. Because that was, that, was, that was a great game from both sides here. And Orange is going to Pyroblast face. He held onto those cards for so long.
You gotta go for the Ink Master Solia style points, though. Okay, you know what? 9.9 .9 out of 10. Uh, this is the new Pointy homage, elbows. The no messing homage. I'm just gonna win Hearthstone games homage. And yeah. I like it. I like people who win Hearthstone games. I think it's nice when they do that. Yeah, but you, you play Ink Master Solia and then Pyroblast. Oh, don't know about that. That's one. what I was what saying. You get disconnected. <laughs> you increase the chances that you disconnect. <laughs> is that your logic? Yeah. Yeah, but you get like 10 extra Twitter followers for that. That's a fair trade. Yeah. $150,000, 10 Twitter sure followers. That. Yeah. If you guys aren't following Orange on Twitter already, he's a very passionate Hearthstone player. Always posts his deck lists, uh, which is really nice because I know people are always curious about how these tournaments, uh, these, these high performers, what they lineups they actually bring. So Orange always does that. And he's also just kind of so tweeting about his real progress throughout the tournament. Always talking about his matchups, how he's feeling. So you really tap into the mindset of the player and get to know him. Sometimes players just say like, ah, yeah. result, <laughs> result, stream, I'm streaming, I'm streaming. Maybe an occasional meme with a thinking face. I'm, I'm streaming, I'm streaming. <laughs> That's pretty much the exact, most of the Twitter followers these days have to read. And stuff always seems to happen in Orange's life. Like you'll get to an airport 24 hours early because you read the ticket wrong. Right, right, there's right. always something going on that you He's can He's always go, going through something. Yeah, that's Orange's Twitter. You don't even need to see the face. You just know, yeah, that'll be Orange then. Messing something up strangely and amusingly and admitting it. So yeah, he is, uh, I believe, um, orange underscore HS. But don't quote me on that. I think that's correct. There may not be an underscore, but I think there is. Is it just orange HS? It's one of those two. It is. I'm going to check because I want to get this right. Looks oh. like he started off with patches in the hand. That's not exactly what he was looking for. If this is a very straightforward, typical Shaman deck, tipping out to Aya with no Doom Hammer. Uh, we've seen this all week. Uh, this is the, the the aggro shaman of choice. Seems to be pretty well chewed. People are happy with how it works out. It's uh, HS underscore R and headed backwards. Near enough. I said R and underscore HS. Near enough. We are in China after all. Yeah. Job's done. Okay, so just getting out the buccaneer. Oh, well, actually, that was a really clever joke. Wait, Thank wait you. did you intend it that way? Yeah, like so how Chinese people say last name first? No, I was intended it that yeah, way. Oh, wow. Well done. <laughs> that one flew over my head for about two seconds. I was like, wow. <laughs> Ah, well played. Huh. Thank you, sir. Well anyway, <laughs> here comes Orange <laughs> as I try desperately to compose <laughs> myself. And he's going to start the beatdown with this small time beatdown. He's got to consider whether he just wants to coin into a faceless, I guess, next turn. Yeah, coining the faceless is really good. And that's probably much better than J Claw, so. Yeah, but maybe, because J Claws is actually four damage over two turns versus the faceless, right? Yeah. Because you're able to hit with a 3 2 twice. Because if you hero power, you're hitting with a 1 2. And so actually, he's going to yeah. go one step further than that. It's not just when do you want to faceless, it's when do you want to feral spirit, when do you do the second faceless. And right. He's, so he's playing lots of turns ahead here. The line would be uh, hero power or patches, yep. then coin faceless, and then you have Jade Claws. And then you would play another faceless. So that would so be the four turn line. I think after all of that, he may have decided, you know what, that's just a mess. Even though it looks really good in the short term to get the 7-7, seven seven, maybe he felt that the rest of the overloads just worked out a little bit awkwardly, and he's going to play the more natural builder. Well, it's kind of hard to say here, because Orange uh, now is stuck in a slightly awkward position here. Um. Patches Patches disrupts the format of ploy, so if Huang has a Twilight Drake or a Kazakus, it's going to be a little bit annoying, so you can sneak in that extra damage. But the benefit of keeping Patches is that if you pick a Flame Tongue Totem, all of a sudden one damage becomes three, and it kind of makes up for the deficit that you didn't have it early on. Because Patches, when it comes out, gets one, two, maybe three damage before it's usually dealt with. But if you're able to keep it for a Flame Tongue Totem, you can kind of make up that damage later on. Yeah, and... This may work out well for now. The the ordering, this is the last turn where it's going to matter, and now he's going to get that Flame Wreath down into Ferals, into Flame Wreath, which is probably what he was planning when he decided to, to skip a turn earlier in the round. Early in the but now with Bran coming in, it feels like you have to deal with Bran first. It's very destructive to let Bran get onto the board too long. But at the same time, you miss out on the Flame Wreath faceless, so what do you choose? Yeah, you can have a 2-2 two, two and no Bran or a 7-7 seven, seven and a Bran. I think I think your hand is forced to probably Jade Lightning here. It's a fairly efficient turn, other than the part where you miss out on a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, this is what I think we can do is maybe you can uh, 
Okay, he's going to play favor his face. But I was saying, if you play the Jade Lightning, you can at least try to make up for some of the pressure by coining out the Spirit Claws to start hit attacking right. his face. Right, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you're giving up a two damage weapon, too. So this is something that Orange had to consider. When he played Jade Claws, he didn't attack. And because he drew Spirit Claws, he got a little bit punished for his inability to pressure efficiently. One of the interesting things about Shaman decks is these guys have limited time. A lot of it, but limited time to prepare for events like this. And I think people tend to assume that the Shaman deck is one they're going to be able to pick up and at least play reasonably well. A lot of the decisions can be quite simple. Mm -hmm. And when you haven't played it a million times and you pick up a hand like this, it, it can still provide a bit of a, a bit of a speed bump for you at times. So. Yeah, don't deny that. Uh, Huang's best battle cry minion uh, for brand for brand synergy is Defender of Argus, but it's not even that amazing. It's just kind of okay, so he's gonna play it. Uh, yeah, and then that gets kind of bullied by the Jade Lightning. Yeah, or or the other seven seven, depending how he sees it. Well, I was thinking that now he picked up the uh, the pirate, maybe that would change it. But I still think that Jade Lightning here is pretty efficient. It's four mana removal, seven seven gets to go face. Yeah, and your opponent has to prove that he has a siphon soul to remove it. Otherwise, he's still not dealing with this right now. And these are the games where Reno Jackson is almost useless. He'll be useful if the game gets stabilized for saying I've ne I've stabilized now I've won. But he's a long way from stabilizing this situation. I mean, Reno in just straight up in this position isn't horrible. I mean, Emperor is also pretty good too, because then you can save Reno plus something else for the following turn and make your turns much more efficient. I almost like that better because your opponent can't really kill you unless he has like double lava burst. Seven. He has only six mana Five. next turn. Yeah. Oh wow. I think he went for like a soul fire or a power overwhelming. That's what he was thinking about. Because then he could use that with the mortal coil. The corruption is all well and good, but it, you're going to eat seven more damage in the meantime. But yeah, probably okay. Orange is assembling the damage here, and again, every turn it's just being complicated as to exactly the best way to proceed. Yeah, so Huang, uh, instead of playing the Emperor, he went to see if he could find a way to remove the fa Faceless. And uh, he's, he's okay with the Corruption, because the Corruption coming down means that Orange either has to trade or go face. And if he trades, he saves Heaven Health and he doesn't have to play Reno. Uh -huh. If he goes face, he could just play Reno. So Huang's in a really <laughs> dominant position right now. Um, and I, I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed that he found such a line, despite face staring down a Faceless that's going to attack him in the face three times. Yeah, he's managed <laughs> to keep the Reno for what we're saying, for trying to stabilize once he's not dead. And looking like he might get away with it, although Orange still has this handful of efficient damage hanging around. Man, but I mean, when you, when you see the uh, Spirit Claws and... I mean, it depends on how he chooses to clear here if he ends up using the one mana chargers. Uh huh. But, uh... Huang's still very much okay here. And that there's is the Siphon. Super that's okay. huge. That's really just about going to seal the game, I should think, because that's going to buy him the time he needs. He's going to protect his board. Yeah, that's looking really good. That little bit of heal, just get him out of range of any accidents. Yeah, I mean, this is the best target that you Siphon Soul on. And I think, Ar I mean, Orange is not out of it yet. He still has Jade Lightning and, you know, hypothetically six damage from the Spirit Claws. I mean, even the uh, the Tunnel Trog and the Spirit Claws can be problematic for your opponent to deal with. Yeah, uh, everything. a lot of things are going to be dealt with with Hellfire's Mortal Coils here. Like, the hand that Huang has is, is almost perfect for the hand he would want. He's got lots of options to not die, including killing things, healing himself, and turning himself into a demon from some sort of hell. So I'm looking at Tunnel Trog and Spirit... Uh, sp Spirit wolves of some kind. Um, that gives you one more mana to f to play either the Salsi or the the patches. I still think saving Salsi and patches is okay, but you're tucking the you're tucking the deck hand behind the taunt, so maybe you can double damage with that. So I don't think I hate playing the deck hand here, even though it's, of course it just feeds directly into the Hellfire or the Mortal Coil. There is little time. Yeah, now Huang can do it how he likes. Okay. I think the Hellfire is probably safe. Maybe it's not 12. 
Uh, Reno seems safer, actually. I'm guessing. I think you have to probably Reno because you're dead to double lava burst. But there's a sign that he is indeed going to Reno because just getting that free card while he can. Yeah, Lorinda's favorite card. Yeah, your Jackson gonna be rich. I love this card. It's so much fun. <laughs> You're so salty. <laughs> it's great. <coughs> He's gonna be oh, rich. Man. He will be rich if he wins this event. I'll tell you that much. That's true. It could be a uh, foreshadowing for Huang. Or he's going to be eliminated because, I mean, even if he wins this game, Orange has to only win one out of four right. with the Shaman deck, and that's really low odds for Huang to win the series. Yeah, although he's got a whole bunch of things that have got a chance. Uh, although, yeah, let's see how it goes. Got to win this one first, although this one's looking like it's over. Uh, it's still not quite in the bag, as the Jade stuff will get progressively bigger. It's getting to the point now where Jade Lightning is almost useful. Aya still in the deck. She could possibly set up some sort of aggro. But it is starting to look a bit bleak for Orange here. Well, it's looking more than a bit bleak. It's looking pretty terminal. I mean, if you get the spell damage totem, he actually had a ton of damage that turn. He'd be able to do uh, 6, 11, 14, 17 damage, put his bone back to 13. <laughs> it would have been nuts. <laughs> as a result... Yeah, from uh, nowhere in particular as well. A whole collection of nothing. Yeah, instead he kind of gets this. I still like using Lava Burst here because Lava Burst is is as if, with the Tunnel Trog on board, is almost as if you have sp two spell damage on the board. Yes, I think you've got to use it while you can. So I still think putting that out is good. I can definitely see him not attacking with the weapon, even though he's going to get punished for that too because of Swift <laughs> Swamp Ooze is swamp waiting on the other end. And here comes the damage. I mean, Orange is doing what he can. Uh, saving the Spirit Claws yeah, point as should. well, so he can get the spell damage, as you just mentioned, I think. And everything he does, everything Orange does when he's playing this sort of style, is really, really efficient to get the exact, you know, the maximum damage out of everything. But it's possibly not going to be enough. Although 16 is it's kind of exciting. Yeah, he doesn't choose to use the coil. Um, I think Coil would be pretty useful for him to draw a taunt of some kind, like Sun Fury Protector. Or even honestly, the Bruiser wouldn't be bad either, because then you could play the Bruiser, then Hellfire, then play the Ooze, and still have a 4 2 taunt. But maybe he just feels confident enough because he's at 13. He's saying, yeah. ah, I'm, I'm fine. Spell damage into double burst is still one off lethal at this point now. And yeah. he's setting up his own two or three turn lethal as well while he's at it. Alright, well, Orange, not really much going on here. He's got the small time Buccaneer. Uh, not really anything useful. Might as well Jade Lightning, probably the face. I think you're in a situation where you want Jade Lightning into burst, into burst, and not die in between. Yeah, this is the instances where you do really miss Doomhammer. <laughs> where you're like, oh man, imagine if I had that Doomhammer. Alright, so the, the out by doing this means that Aya is rated higher for him than maybe the Lava Burst outs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, his post opponent at 9 still not killing range, so he probably needs to win through board. It buys him a little bit of time for drawing those extra cards. A, a very little bit, but, yeah. you know. It's, it's not looking good for Orange here. No, I'm pretty sure if Huang just plays minions, um, or if he even plays Draxus, but he can save Draxus for more heal, because it's very unlikely Orange has right. one card that can deal... 13 damage. <laughs> He's playing Shaman. Maybe it's possible. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this, is, this isn't your normal warrior. This is Shaman. Shaman can do anything for one mana. I mean, he'll think about it, but I don't think he can do any wrong by just playing minions here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just putting decent amount of stats on the board. The 5-5 five five more relevant than the reduction it's going to give. Wow. Wow, that that was interesting. Maybe if he hits a Maelstrom portal? Okay. Flame Tongue Totem. That might help him to not concede. <laughs> As he's going to be able to deal with things vaguely efficiently. Yeah. So he could kill one minion off here. Hope for no direct damage and still push a little bit of face as well. Yeah, he can kill two minions. He can kill the Drake and he can kill Emperor with the trades. 
Yeah, that seems good. And then if the Drake wants to jump into the Nort 3, like, who cares? Yeah. Not yeah. who cares, but considering what a mess he's in, that's as close to who cares as you can get. If you kill the Acidic Swampers, you can push his face for three. That might be enough, because you're trying to get damage yeah. in. Ah. But then uh, Huang goes to Draxus. Oh, and face a Shamblaze. Yeah. Draxus is a nice heal, and the 6-6 six, six comes out here. Kill off the Flame Tongue. And you kill off the 4-4. Four, four. So there's only one damage on board. He's down I to only needing 10 it. damage off one card now, though. Oh, and now he needs 40. Yeah, I think Orange has to hit another Azure Drake here into like a another Maelstrom flame tongue. There's the Azure Drake. I think he has to hit like Maelstrom Portal actually, so he can okay. be very efficient. Mystery card. Uh, gonna be? Did he draw a card? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was so fast we couldn't even see. <laughs> but it looks like he's conceded. And it goes to three games to one. Orange is still in the driver's seat, but obviously Huang just nibbling back at it to see what he can get. All right, so he's got his priest, his warrior, and his mage. I think he's going to go to mage he's next. A control warrior as well, I think. Okay, so I think Which. he's going to go mage next. Um, control warrior actually does have uh, like a good, pretty good win percentage against shaman. Um, one of the few decks that does. But the problem with control warrior is that it's so bad against everything else right, in the yeah. game. <laughs> it's good against aggro. It's good against Pirate Warrior. It's good against uh, Shamans. And it actually is like decent against a couple of other decks, but it's pretty bad against everything else, like Reno, any kind of Reno stuff. Uh, Jade Druid, of course. Yeah, forcing that ban part. Well, part in part. I mean, look at this lineup against Druid. It's a good call for Powder to say, hey, everyone's going to just lose to Druid. Right, right. And then, you know, rogues now run questing, so it's like even more annoying threats that you want to kind of brawl, but you can't. And then, you know, they conceal stuff. It just just feels like Warrior tends to struggle a little bit. But I have seen some tournament win through Open Cups of people donning that Control Warrior. Uh, VLPS was a big advocate for that. You know, he feels like Control Warrior is really underrated in the meta because everyone's bringing patches lineups, and you could just farm them by playing Control Warrior, Reno Mage, Reno Warlock, and really teching against aggro. And we saw a couple people copy that style from VLPS to win other Open Cups and get points yep. for HCT. Uh, the reason I keep mentioning Powder, by the way, is he is going to be playing alongside Orange and Oscar in one of the upcoming team tournaments. Yep, the Hearts on Trinity series. So for the uh, for Alliance on a on a sort of one-off basis, I believe. So he'll be he representing them. So the reason I keep mentioning him is shows how good a team is. It must be nice to have a friend who, with ten minutes to go before deck submission, says you're doing it wrong. Trust me, do this. And you do it, and it gets you into an advantageous position automatically. Yeah. Uh, teamwork is proving to be very useful in Hearthstone. I think people kind of laughed at the right. idea of teams in general, but as the metagame becomes... L or, or as people's play and preparation becomes more sophisticated, it, it just becomes really important that people play test as a group as opposed to grinding yourself to death on ladder uh, because you only can see such a limited sample size but having five even 10 to 20 people in a group play, play testing with each other or helping each other practice uh, really gets information data hammered a lot quicker and people are being a lot more exclusive with their information too you know when they find yeah. that information they're just holding it to themselves and, and, and games are getting trickier the game yeah. is getting trickier there's a lot more nuance to the game than there used to be you can't just learn a matchup anymore you have to learn the matchup and all the nuances of all the possible builds right and that's kind of what we want to see out of a yeah, game for like sure, Hearthstone. It's, for sure. um, it's a little bit intimidating for players who don't have that practice support group structure. But, I mean, you can start from anywhere. You start with your group of friends. Just kind of ask them how they're <laughs> doing with their data. You know, compile your own records and stat tracking and see what kind of information you guys can draw. And that becomes your power in open cups and big tournaments. Yeah, and just test, test, test. And there's yeah. plenty of other people in the same position who will be delighted to, to play yep. test with you, so just keep yeah. your eyes open. If you're not doing that and you consider yourself a serious competitive Hearthstone player, uh, you're putting yourself at a serious disadvantage. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, same as that. That's why I brought up the team thing. It's that these guys do help each other out, even at this level. They don't know everything. Well, uh... <laughs> or you can just go ahead and ask Twitch chat. They know everything. But you can't bring them with you <laughs> to the tournament. That's the, that's the really hard part. If, if I could ask any person to be on my team for Hearthstone Trinity Series Twitch or Team Link, be Twitch Chat. Yeah, I think that's yeah. definitely the best choice. Um, you get so many lethals with Twitch Chat. Anyway, <laughs> back lethal into the every game. game. Every single game. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Wang has lethal right now. Just Blizzard Face. 
Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Babbling book into. I don't even well, know. hypothetically, if you hit the infinite mana is the uh, is the Archmage Antonius lethal right now. Yep, we got it. Antonius we did it. Twitch up. Fireball, fireball, fireball. But in the real world, this is such a hard turn. It's turn three, and you've lost half of your health. And you're trying desperately to survive to turn five, oh. so you can try and get rich in a situation where you're not just going to take another thirty straight away. Yeah, I think you're just gonna have to ping here instead. Ping the patches just to make yourself feel better. Like, yeah, I took three damage off the board, but really, it's like you only took one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And removes any pirate synergy that might accidentally turn up later as well, of course. And 14 damage. One. Oh, wait, can he actually squeeze in through Salsi? No, he can't. If he actually was able to play Salsi and Jade Lightning, that's lethal right there. But he's one mana off. This is where you need Twitch chat on your <laughs> side. <laughs> They'll find that extra mana for you. No, if, I mean, you can squeeze in the South Sea deckhand. I actually kind of like that a little bit better. Do you just deckhand here, get all the damage to face, and then, I mean, Jade yeah. Lightning face wins so often next turn? You hero power, play Tone Truck, South Sea, you know, getting that, that four damage yeah. with, the, uh, with the South Sea, kind of set up for Jade Lightning. And then he's got to heal himself and deal with the board with five mana. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if he uses the five mana, he can't even coin out Reno. Yeah, this is a good line here from yeah. Orange. The reason why is because if he chooses to go for like a freeze option and you can't attack with weapon or the South Sea, like then then it becomes like an awkward scenario and it, like you, you that you use Jade Lightning this turn. So I actually really like this line that uh, Orange took. He even was uh, rewarded with a taunt totem, so that's really annoying. And I think that's it. You know, the fact that yeah. Reno Mage sometimes gets the Reno the Reno Justice, where you just you draw the awkward parts of your deck, you draw Antonius, Alex Straza, Blizzard, and you don't get that early game. This happens a decent amount of percentage of the time because you play singleton decks. Yes. Exactly GG. the downside of the card. GG Orange into the semi-final against the winner of PNC and Zigzo. That will be another fantastic game that we're hoping to have for you later. 4-1, pretty impressive, and Orange showing that yeah, his recent run of results hasn't just been a fluke. He's yep. he's really put in the time at this game. He's also gotten a huge win every year.